Oh, I'm still here. Sorry about that. Uh, I just uh, was just uh, actually just putting this on the air. Uh, so I do want to say, Mo, uh, thank you so much in advance for just providing us with your time, man. But every, ladies and gentlemen, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live with none other than Mo, the hustler, right here, right now. How you doing this evening? What's up? What's up? I'm doing good. Chilling out here. Burning up right now. I hear you, man. We had a uh, good seven-day heat wave down here in Canada. So, uh, you know, we actually just got a storm the other night, so we're uh, finally cooled down down here for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been drinking a cold one right now. Yeah, that's what's up, man. But if you don't want me asking, like, what made you decide to get into the music industry? Because I know you got a luxurious music career. Oh, man. Uh, it seemed like uh, San Francisco, I was watching a lot of people around the neighborhood, you know, I, I grew up in Lakeville, kind of started watching Cool Nut, you know, he used to amaze me, he used to sit out on the corner and just freestyle out, out, out his head, and then, uh, you know, watching the young Selfie, he, he was a pretty good freestyler too, so they, they both kind of inspired me to want to start doing it, I started listening to other people from other areas, like kind of point RBO Posse, and JT, the bigger figure, and the Gillo, I was like, oh uh, man, that's what I want to do. So, kind of listening to people around in my area, what got me started. And speaking of the RBL posse, man, I noticed a lot of posts actually on your Facebook. I do want to ask you, are you associated with them? And if so, like, how did you guys get connected? Um, well, I met them in the early 90s. We was recording uh, at, at my homie's Mars house. And he stayed up here on Harbor Road where uh, RBL is from. And, uh, yeah, they wind up taking some tapes up there and Black Sea inquired, like, hey, who's these guys? You know, took the CD up there, and by the time I made it up there, we was in the studio recording the album, <laughs> you know, so been around RBL since, like, 94. They put out our first album, the NOH Mafia album. And that must have been such I'm a huge, that must, must have been such a huge, uh, just a feeling for you, man, being able to grow up listening to, listening to these guys, and next thing you know, you know, you're in the studio working with them, man, it must have been a surreal moment for you. And also, as you brought up about the uh, NOH uh, Mafia, I have to ask you, um, what's the story behind that formation? How did you how did you guys get connected? Um, well, we, we kind of like family, you know. Uh, Mal and his little brother, you know, we all family, you know. So we just kind of started out my room, you know, freestyling and making little beats out of my room to where uh, when we started going up there to Mars house, we kind of formed this group. It was way more of us, but by the time we hooked up with Black, it just boiled down to me and Mal as the initial group. So, yeah, it kind of started out my room, just family members hanging around, smoking, drinking, freestyling. And when you were actually just hanging out in that room, like hanging out, drinking, and freestyling, did you did you think you guys would actually be as big as you currently are today? Or you guys were just doing it for fun, not even trying to get big? Um, when it started, we weren't even trying to get big. Like I said, I didn't even know that they was taking them tapes up, <laughs> up to Harbor Road to let everybody hear it. It started off just, you know, fun, hanging out in the room. And, uh, yeah, once he inquired, we started taking it serious. It, it was all gas, no breaks after that. And also, in 96, you guys actually released your, uh, your, your first album, which is uh, Ends on High. I have to ask you, what is the inspiration behind that album, and... Of course, man. Like, uh, is it still available available to be purchased today? Yeah. Um, well, you know, we, we we used to get uh high and just you know just talk, just talk, 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 and that that if you listen to the album, that's what it is. Like this song, "Trip Off Life." It was kind of based upon that. Yeah, everything was built around "Trip Off Life." Cause that's what we used to always do: just get high, and just trip off life, and listen to the songs. A lot of it was just you know things we were going through, a lot of personal things we were going through, and we just built on that, and that's how it came out. And I have to say, that's actually one of my favorite albums by you, man. It's such a, uh, it's such an amazing album from start to finish. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I still slap it in the, in the, in the, in play it from time to time, and yeah, it was back then. After we recorded that album, I, I knew it was timeless. It still is. The beats were timeless. Black Sea did a, a lot of, he did most of the beats on that album. 
and uh, yeah, it was just it was timeless. And you can still listen to it to this day. It's still relevant to this day to me. And I gotta say, my two favorite tracks actually off that record is "Driving Me Wild" and "Another Ho Story." Man, I love those tracks. <laughs> yeah, but it was a couple of mine too. And uh, yeah, Mally Mal came with "Driving Me Wild," and um, man, that beat crazy. I love that song. I don't think that song will ever get old, man. I, I still listen. I still listen to those tracks like it came out yesterday, man. So, you know, it, it beats this new age rap like right out of the water. Yeah, like I said, it, it's still relevant today. You know, it, I hear it all the time. You know, I can my my DMs be kind of full with people that say that that album and what it did for them in that particular time in life. And, and man, it's a few songs on there. Like the trip off, like the uh, um, one with Hitman, Live for the Phone, uh, uh, Road to This, and that was like our model, Road to This. It was like that's what we did every day. So, <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of favorites on there myself. And also, man, I saw a picture on your Facebook of you and Rapping Forte. You don't want me asking, yeah. how, how did you and Rapping Forte get connected? And do you guys have any future projects together? Um, well, I, I, you know, we did a lot of shows. Like, you know, I was I ran around RBL a lot, so I met a lot of people through RBL, and Forte was one of them. And, uh, no, nah, we haven't did any music together, but, uh, you know, he, he's pretty accessible. I always talk about it. So I'm trying to put this project together, and he, he was one person I did want to reach out to. Like my Building Bridges album, I was kind of going back and forth. Like I wanted it to be a compilation because I'm producing now, and I kind of wanted to showcase some of my beats on this Building Bridges album. And he was one person I, I wanted to reach out to. So yeah, you might see something coming up. Because I really, I really do think you know uh, yourself, Mo the Hustler, and just rapping Forte would just would just do an iconic collaboration. Man, you're both of your guys' West Coast styles together. Man, I think that'd be absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, he was one of my inspirations too back in the day. It, it was like I, I uh, went to one of his in stores back in the day before I was even rapping, it, and he was amazing to me too. The way he used to freestyle and just he, he'd go on and on for days. So to like you know know him in person now and see what kind of you know good dude he is, yeah, that tricks me out from time to time too. A lot of my favorite artists back in the day now I actually know. That is it, a trip. And, and I, I, I agree with you on that, I like, I, especially on the radio side of things, man. Like, I've met people that I grew up listening to, and it, you, you sit back and you go, God damn, man, like, that's cool. You know what I mean? It's actually a trip. Yeah, hey, you kick back one day, you're probably getting high or just drinking, and you're like, dude, I used to be one of your biggest, it's still a big fan. You know, I'm not a fan to tell somebody. I'm still a big fan of people that I, I know now personally, and I'm um, still a fan like I didn't know them. And also, you did a mixtape with uh, underground artist Mac Reese called Pay the Man. I have to ask, how did you get connected with Mac Reese? And also, uh, where can our listeners uh, f find themselves a copy of that particular mixtape? Well, we just put a few songs out. We didn't, we didn't ever really put the mixtape out. But, uh, yeah, we dropped a few songs. So we we working on a bunch of stuff. Man, me and Reese, he's he like my little brother. He's been around since my bedroom days. <laughs> you know, I've been around forever. I met him when he was like 15. So he's been kind of like a bit of my wing, been a protege for years, learned a lot. I watched his growth. So, yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming. Yeah, actually, uh, I had him on the radio station a few months back, man. Such a phenomenal individual. Very, very talented as well at that. Yeah. 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 He, uh, he stays motivated. And you also did an album with Freeze called City to City. I have to ask you, um, what's the story between you and Freeze, and uh, what was it like working on that particular project? Um, well, I actually lived in Seattle for about six years. That's how I met Freeze. He was one of the first people I met when I was out. I actually met him out here at the studio, at Black Sea Studio. But when I went to Seattle, I tapped in with him, and uh, yeah, we became good friends. And we actually did two albums. We did... Uh, City to City is uh, one album that we didn't throw out there that we keep talking like we're going to put it out, uh, and that's called uh, Everywhere. But, uh, yep, I met him when I lived in Seattle, you know, people I met when I moved out there. 
and that's really cool, man. You know what I mean? Freeze is uh, Freeze is such a talented individual, man. So that's actually really cool that you actually had the opportunity to work with him. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of music too, you know. And we, we was just talking not too long ago too about putting that second album out. That first album we had put it out on his website and just kind of floated it out. I got a few songs out there on, like I think maybe my could be my SoundCloud or something like that. I put a few of the songs out there. But uh, yeah, that second album was pretty crazy, and I think uh, we'll wind up putting that out eventually. Plus some new music. And I also saw on your Facebook as well about, about something that's called uh, the the Right Way M Militia. Can you tell us a bit uh -huh. more about that and uh, what's that all about? Ah, uh, the Right Way Militia. That was uh, that was uh, the Right Way production is Black Seed label and and everybody up under it. At that time, we did uh, we did a mixed we did, we did the uh, DVD and the compilation, the Right Way Militia compilation. If you hadn't checked that out, it's a DVD to go with it. But that was pretty much showcasing everybody that, that was under the umbrella. And uh, that's what that was about. You know, we had a bunch of artists, Clyde, Hitman, uh, me, Prime Minister. It, it was a bunch of us. That's what that was about. And also, uh, I have also have to uh, mention, I noticed as well that you actually are featured on uh, Black Sea's newest album. I have to ask you, uh, uh, where can our listeners actually check that out? Um, I, it should be on all platforms. You can go, uh, you know, the Steel Ruthless album. Shit, if you go back, I'm on, yeah, I'm on a lot of mountains up there. But, uh, yeah, it's on all platforms, Steel Ruthless. You can go check that out. And also, uh, last month, uh, May 31st, you actually released the video for Run It Up, which actually which actually is a cartoon with Scooby-Doo. I have to ask you, um, <laughs> what's the inspiration behind that? What made you actually implement Scooby-Doo inside that music video? Oh, I, just, I was just drifting on the net one day, man. I seen, uh, it was uh, the little Frankenstein character is what drew me into that. It was his little dance move, and they, they, if you look at the video, they all look like they read it. Also, uh, I also read on your uh, Reverb okay. Nation that you were actually set to drop uh, your your mixtape called Follow Me Too. I have to ask you, uh, what can our listeners expect from that mixtape, and when is the estimated release date for that? Oh, it's already out. You can get that on my SoundCloud. You can get it on SoundCloud, uh, thatpip.com. It's kind of floated that out there, too. Yeah, but it's out already. You can check that out on my SoundCloud, thatpip. So I have to ask you, Mo, what's next for you? Is there anything I happen to miss during this interview? Anything else you want to promote? We still have you here live on the radio station. Well, uh, yeah, right now I'm putting together uh, the Building Bridges album. And uh, that's, what, that's what I'm shooting for now. Still kind of debating, do I want it to be a compilation? Uh, the bottom line is I'm just trying to promote that I'm doing beats now. I'm going to produce that whole album. So taking all verses. So anybody want to get on? I got hot tracks. DM me, shoot you some beats. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. That's my focus right now, building bridges. And that's the best best route to go, man. Best route to go. Uh, when they, when you actually yeah. want them to DM you, uh, do you mean like Facebook, Instagram? Just that way people can actually um, get at you the proper way. Yeah, Facebook or or Instagram. You know, either or. You can email me, motorhustle at gmail dot com. But uh. Yeah, whatever is easier for everybody. I know I talk to people nowadays, they more on Instagram and not Facebook. So either work Facebook, Instagram, or just email me, Mo the Hustle at gmail.com. Uh, gmail so I have to ask you, uh, Mo the Hustler, what's the why? So, um, sorry, uh, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that comes on the radio station. Uh, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And, of course, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you if they're not already doing so. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, Motor Hustler, that's M O underscore T H A underscore Hustler. You know, that's my Instagram. You can find me at uh, Motor Hustler on Facebook. And uh, pretty much, uh, you can go check out my SoundCloud type, or just Google Motor Hustler. You can find me.
behind all, all my pages. I have a Reverb Nation, a SoundCloud, a Instagram, Facebook. It's Google Motor Hustle. You can contact me on anything. I'm, you know, I'm usually on. I might not post too much, but I'm on all the time. I check my messages. So I have, I have to tell you, Mo, thank you so much again for coming up on the radio station. Um, it was an absolute honor, man, and most definitely a privilege. I hope down the ro- down the line we can do this again. But again, man, thank you so much. Um, I, I listened to that album, like I said, a, a lot, man. I'm a huge fan of your work, man, so it was an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, man, you're most certainly welcome. You have yourself a wonderful night, man. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you.